Greetings, this is Dickie Adams from PocketNow.com, and today we're going to take a closer look at the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G, specifically the hardware. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Compared to my daily driver, the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G is about the same size, width, length, and weight. It's just a little bit longer over here and due to the way that the edges roll up on either side it lends itself for a slightly better feel in the hand insofar as holding it landscape versus portrait mode. Compared side by side with the screens the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G has a much more uh, warm screen compared to the Samsung Epic 4G, which has a definitely a cooler uh, color. The It's hard difficult to see in this particular view, uh, but the brightness even, uh, full brightness on the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G is a little brighter, at least to my eyes, compared to the um, Epic 4G. Screen size is, is obviously the, the uh, winner here will be the um, Epic 4G. But, uh, you know, comparing a 4-inch screen to a 3.5-inch screen is, is a no-brainer. Viewing angles on the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G are actually quite good. Try not to get to the glare here before you, but try to show you the um, that we don't use lose any real uh, color casting. Uh, there's not really any fading, and it's uh, visible from uh, all angles um, without losing visual aspects. Here we can see the multicolor LED blinking to give us a test message. It happens about once every minute. Uh, I really like this functionality. Let's talk briefly about the buttons that we see here on the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G. Uh, the orientation is obviously a little funny looking when you're looking at it from a portrait view. The buttons themselves are nice and clicky good tactile feel, uh, and the button, the area in which you click the button ranges from all the way on one edge almost to the middle uh, on either button, and there's a small spot right there that you can't actually click either one. Uh, the speaker grill here, uh, the volume that comes out of it is great. I find that the clarity is good opposed to the um, back speaker which I really dislike the sound of uh, even though it is plenty loud I don't like the tone uh, that comes out of there um, and for those of you who were um, at, took issue with the white comment I apologize it is a chrome cover on the cover itself inside it is black is where the speakers are but inside this case it's white where the covers up Anyway, speakers on the, the speakerphone is, like I said, plenty loud enough, but I just don't like um, the tone. If you look down here at the bottom, once again, uh, moving back to the buttons comment, and apologize for just kind of jumping around, but the once again, the orientation seems a little odd until you look at it from the this angle. And... Considering the Sidekick is a landscape device and always has been, um, this position actually makes sense where you have easy access with your thumbs uh, and with these grips on the back to hold on to, to operate this device in a very efficient manner, uh, something I'm, I'm getting a little used to. And even your power button and your volume keys uh, make better sense down here on the bottom and the headphone jack because holding it in this position makes a lot more sense than holding it in a candy bar style position with your home screen all the way at the top and your power button in an awkward spot down here at the bottom. By default, the screen is set to not rotate unless you pop the screen open or slide it close. This can be adjusted in the settings. Uh, I like the fact that they configured it so it's simple to use, but f wonder if some users are going to start the device up and turn on the web browser and try to flip the phone this way and find that it doesn't actually change the orientation at all. 
I really like the way they integrated this D-pad on the Sidekick 4G. Easy finger swipes back and forth to highlight new areas, to scroll up and down through zones. Uh, it works really slick, pretty accurate from what I've found, and you can simply press down firmly on the button itself to launch uh, whatever uh, view that you want to go into. For example, apps here, if I press this, then I go into the app drawer and then back to home as a nice feel um, and the buttons on either side are the same as the buttons on the top. The micro USB door and the micro USB port uh, located on the same side as the dedicated camera key button. I'm just a little concerned about this piece of plastic. I've never had good luck with uh, devices that have a door that has to be uh, opened and closed multiple times and uh, I think that in the future we'll probably see people complaining that this door comes off. It's pretty stiff uh, when you um, flip it open there's not much give here and this could get clipped off pretty easily. It does snap back down in place and, and stays in place uh, appropriately and doesn't actually open very easily as you can see here. Uh, speaking of charging the battery and battery life, I found that the device uh, performed admirably. Uh, even with plenty of phone calls uh, today in my test, I was able to make the device last the entire day uh, with very little issue. Uh, and uh, when I put it on the charger to charge, it charged actually very quickly, especially compared to my Epic 4G. And perhaps it lasts longer than my Epic 4G because of the smaller screen size uh, or that they've got the um, processor clocked in some fashion even though it is supposed to be a 1 gigahertz processor. Uh, some underclocking or uh, some other, thing, other things might be going on there. We'll have to wait for folks at XDA to tell us what's really happening behind the scenes in the processor world. But again, I found that the battery life uh, was more than sufficient to last me throughout the day with plenty of phone calls. The headphone jack is nice and solid. Nice solid click as you plug things into it. These are my headphones, no headphones included with de the device itself. What I did find though is when the headphone uh, jack is plugged in, if you've got one that's uh, particularly large, you may find that when you're holding the device it's difficult to get to the volume up button uh, because the cable will be in the way. Um, the volume levels in the Sidekick 4G I, through the headphones uh, were more than acceptable, uh, plenty loud for my ears. I found the audio quality to be uh, more than satisfactory. The microphone hole down at the bottom and thus far, I have had very, uh, well, now no complaints about the uh, volume levels uh, when making phone calls on the device. Uh, I haven't had any uh, issues with call quality coming in, and I haven't had any issues really with making phone calls out. Uh, the only time I did have a problem with this device thus far uh, was when my battery got low. It made a strange beeping noise and then turned off. Uh, pressing and holding the power button did turn it back on. Uh, I did end up charging the device shortly after that, uh, but I'm, I haven't had it happen again, so I'll uh, keep you informed in the full review if I see that uh, issue come up. The keyboard on the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G is nicely spaced, has good solid presses to the buttons. Uh, they feel nice. The only part that has really thrown me off is the throw between the keys is a little wider than I'm used to on the Sprint Epic 4G that I normally use. So it's taken me, a, I can't type quite as fast as I, I can on my other phone, but I'm finding that the more I use this device, the faster I can type. It does have a backlit um, tray, and you can see it light up there. Let's talk briefly about the, how solid this device feels. It, very little give or extra clicking sounds when you twist the device other than me mashing the buttons on the other side as I'm doing this. The back of the device is nicely rounded, making it easy to hold on to. No real rough edges, just smooth plastic. These little ridges come in handy when you're kicking out that 
screen for the first time, you don't feel like you're going to lose your grip and throw the device on the floor. Sadly, the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G does not have a flash. This will present issues uh, in any dark environments. Outdoors, it takes pretty great pictures for the 3 megapixel camera that it is. Uh, but I've done some initial test shots, and I'll post those in the full review. As mentioned in the first look uh, unboxing, this device is HSPA Plus compatible, 4G uh, compatible. And as you can see from these speed test results, and we'll post these in the full review as well, you, the initial results here were from uh, the basement of my house in my office. And then when we were out and about, we were getting 6.4. Uh, and then inside a restaurant down in the basement uh, later this evening, that wraps up our hardware coverage of the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G. If you have any particular questions or comments, leave them in the comments field and we'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching.